How your property looks is the key, because often it's online, people are looking on lots of websites, and whether your property jumps out on that website, you've got those few moments to capture them um, that they want to either book or look a bit further, look at a few more pages. So it's very important that you have a look and see how, and the idea, I think, of taking some pictures of your let yourself, um, if you're not quite sure, and seeing how it presents, you know, have it up on your laptop and have a look how you see it. But that's the opportunity you've got against other, the other competition for people to actually find you uh, and, and choose your let. So look how it presents is one thing. There are other housekeeping points with regards to sort of health and safety, things like carbon monoxide detectors, if you've got a wood burner, you've got a, a boiler that's within a property, or you've a certain amount of smoke detectors, depending on the size of your property, fire guards, if you're having children in the properties, uh, fire risk assessments, all sorts of things that we, or, um, we can help you with or you can find out about online. But very important things to make sure that your property not only looks beautiful, but is safe and ready to rece uh, receive your first guests. You have to have holiday cottage insurance, I'm sure you're aware of that. There's a lots of checks that you need to do just to make sure that when your first guests arrive, they've picked your property on the website, that's the one they want. They're driving uh, up from wherever they are, or down from wherever they live, that that property is ready for them, um, and it's as safe and as clean, as presentable as it can be. So hopefully some ideas that we've given you today. Something else that we've got, um, we've just brought a couple of ideas of welcome trays over on the corner, which have, we, we uh, presented. How the property um, it looks when your guests first arrive, because you can create lovely glossy images online, but also when they first arrive, you want them to kind of walk in and go, wow, and if they think it looks even better than the pictures, then that's not a bad thing. So if they're arriving late, you know, light the wood burner, put a few lights on, make sure the heating's on. Um, a nice tray on the table that's got maybe some flowers, you know, a bunch of daffodils, a pound, two for a pound probably if you buy them by the side of the road. Don't have to put a bottle of wine, but something Cornish perhaps if you're in Cornwall or Dev, you know, from Devon if you're, you're located further up uh, in, another, in another county. Um, but something Cornish, cream tea, saffron buns, homemade cakes if you like to bake and you've got the time. Do something, uh, something. <laughs> time, what's that? Someone was thinking. Um, it's that personal touch and it's giving them something that is that, it's just that lovely welcome when they arrive. Tea, coffee, milk, the basics. Um, if it can be Cornish tea, lovely, but it doesn't have to be. You might have a coffee machine in there, you might just give them a, you know, a, a little jar, a little kilner jar with a few, enough for them to have their first cup of tea or coffee when they arrive. But something on a tray with a little welcome when they arrive goes a long, long way. And if you are a dog-friendly property, uh, I've got a couple of ideas of things that you can put in a basket. Why not show the dog that they're welcome? Yes, you've accepted a dog. You may well be getting an extra, I know we charge an extra £25 per dog per week uh, to go towards any if there is additional cleaning. I have to say in my experience, and I think Debs would probably say the same, that we have very few issues with dogs. In fact, some owners say they'd rather have dogs than children in their properties. Um, dogs, uh, most dog owners are very responsible. They'll come away with a cage or a bed. They'll come away with a wet, you know, an old towel and everything else when the dog's been on the beach. But just in case, why not have a little basket there that's got a throw on it, so in case, yes, they're not allowed on the furniture, but we all know if we're dog lovers, sometimes, or owners, sometimes the dog is used to sitting next to their master or on the chair. So why not provide them with a, a throw so at least they can sit next to them or sit on the floor. A couple of poo bags. You can buy a roll of poo bags for under a pound. So tear a couple off, stick those in a basket. A little treat. I bought a bag of four treats in Sainsbury's yesterday. Other supermarkets are available. And I think it was four for a pound. So 25p each. So there you go. They arrive. There's those things waiting for them. And then perhaps a little card. We mocked up something like this, which is the do's and don'ts. Um, and do have a look if you've got a moment. It's like, please remember you're not allowed on the furniture. Please remember you're not allowed in the bedrooms. Um, please ask your owners to clear up after you. Um, uh, and, and putting things in like where the dog-friendly beaches are in your area, where they can get some nice walks that people can go for. So make sure your cottage information is there. That it gives them lots of great information on things to do locally. It's all about saying, you know, we love, we're glad you're here. This is all the stuff you can do while you're here. Um, and it, whether it's a visit, a phone call from you or your housekeeper, um, a little personalised welcome note on the welcome tray if you can't be there to see them, all those little things will make uh, those, those, those extra touches um, and make your guests feel welcome. There are things like making sure your furniture meets the fire regulations, the basic stuff. Is the equipment that you've got in the property fit for purpose? We as a company have a certain itinerary. 
uh, or inventory, should I say, that we ask um, all of our cottage owners to make sure they've got all of those items. Many will have additional things above and beyond. It's the stuff you've got in your kitchen cupboards at home. Um, all those useful gadgets like garlic presses and things like that. Cleanliness is the other so important thing. It's one thing I think if Tanya from our customer services uh, department was here, it would probably be top of her um, list of people's complaints. If the weather's bad, okay, they can live with that. If something breaks down in the property and somebody is looking after it and getting it sorted out, the guests are happy. But if they turn up to property and it's not ready and it's not presented well, that's where that's when the problems can arise. So I'm sure you're all meticulous with your cleaning, but it's one of those things, whether you're doing it yourself or getting a housekeeper or cleaner in to do it for you, um, it's very important that things are pulled out, everything is spotlessly clean before your first guests arrive. Just check if there was anything else on here that I haven't... Or pack testing electrical appliances. Um, description, back to that marketing thing. You could have the most amazing property, um, it's, but it's so important to make sure those photographs represent that and the description because that's what you're leading your guests in and hoping that they're going to book from. You could create a lovely website but obviously people have got to find you as well so it's important that if you're doing it yourself or the agency that you're working with um, that they're going to be found if someone's googling cottages in your area that you're going to pop up. But just optimising everything and whether it's on your own, whether you need help, whether you need advice from us or somebody else, it's just making sure that you're showing your property um, in its best light and that those people are going to click book um, and not only they're going to come this year but they're going to come next year and maybe for many years to come. In fact I visited an owner recently who'd got a very clever idea and I don't know that everyone would want to do this but he's decided to get his, uh, if he's got children staying in his property, he's decided to uh, see if they'd like to plant a tree in the garden when they're there. Um, and it's very clever actually because you can imagine you know a six year old, seven year old child comes on holiday they've got to plant a tree in the garden. It's like, well, they're going to want to come back and see how big their tree is. So he could have that guest now for the next 10, 15 years, perhaps, and then maybe a few years lull while they go off and get married, universe, or whatever, and then they'll be bringing their children back. So it's, um, but it's, it's just being welcoming. If you're child-friendly, think about games, think about um, safety uh, aspects like stair gates. Uh, maybe you want to supply a cot and a high chair because they're the two big items that people don't want to be carting all the way down the A30 or wherever they're coming down the M5 with them. If you're dog friendly, think about maybe offering a basket or something. Look at things like your flooring, make sure that you haven't got, you know, all your, your grandma's best china sort of sat on a, on a little bookcase next that might get knocked over. Remove any, that's another thing we advise people, remove anything that's particularly personal or valuable before you let guests arrive. Generally they're very careful, generally they're not about to put it in their bag and take it home with them, but accidents do happen, things can get broken. So just don't lose the personal touch. Make sure there's a bit of you in your property, but just take out anything that you would be very sorry if it, uh, if it got broken or, or lost.